Hey Simonix, what's up? Welcome to a new tutorial and today we are going to build a desktop application using Ionic. We might have done this in the past um, or perhaps it was inside an Ionic Academy course but we can use Electron in a great way to uh, wrap our Ionic application as a real desktop application and on top of it we will also do all of this with Capacitor since Capacitor is basically the future of our Ionic applications and what we should use and also um, Capacitor supports Electron for most of the plugins or the APIs available so let's do this. I've already started a blank new Ionic application I used the type Angular and I also automatically enabled Capacitor for the project. Now there are a few things we need to go through. So first of all uh, I installed NGX Electron and also had to install Electron since it was a dependency in NGX Electron. This is a package that helps you to communicate between your Ionic process and the real uh, Electron process of the application. Also, what we need in the end is the Electron Packager, since you usually want to package your application and somehow distribute it on a Mac or on Windows. And also, um, I had to update to Angular 9 since my Ionic template wasn't using Angular 8 yet, but perhaps you're already using Angular 9. So, after you've done all of this, uh, you're usually inside a blank Ionic project, um, which looks hopefully a bit better than this. Um, not sure what's going on, but I will just restart my Ionic serve. So before you add the Electron platform, it's good to make an Ionic build. Uh, otherwise, I think you will run into uh, trouble. So simply go ahead now with npx cap at Electron. This will create a new folder for your Electron application, just like you're used to with the iOS and the Android folder. And whenever you make changes to your project and you want to update the Electron application, you know, I uh, have to run Ionic. Yeah, now I got two live reloads going on. Uh, you have to run Ionic build again and then npx cap copy or sync uh, if you do any bigger changes, but copy should be fine. And once you're done with this, you can actually simply run npx cap open Electron. And this should hopefully open your Electron application and you should see a window coming up uh, and then we are right within an Electron application. Right now I'm on uh, Mac, so this is of course a Mac application and we see the first error. The change we need to apply to fix this error is actually pretty easy, so just go to your source index file and put a dot in front of the base href. I'm not exactly sure uh, why this isn't working out of the box, um, but that's the way to go. So now I will have to run ionic build npx cap copy once again, and this takes a bit of time. So. In the future or in a follow-up tutorial, we might also add some sort of live reload for Electron, which is definitely possible or was in the past. Uh, right now I haven't found the way to integrate it yet, but I'm super sure it is possible. So if you're interested in more, just let me know and we will do another tutorial on live reload and perhaps something else as well. Now let's open our application once again to actually verify that the application works because uh, it should work in the plain state. So here we are. Don't mind that the dev tools on the right side are automatically opened. You can disable this and then you would have a complete desktop application just like this. So this is exactly how our Ionic Surf looks like at the moment as well. Now let's add a few things to our application. So dive into your app module and let's first of all inject our ngx electron module. And the import also goes to the array of imports. And we can close this as well. So with that in place, let's move over to our homepage and I will keep the typing a bit shorter in this tutorial since uh, we want to talk more about Electron, not too much about the code. So I just added a little button to schedule a notification and a little function to copy a text to our clipper. Just to show you that 
The capacitor plugins definitely work within uh, Ionic, Ionic Surf, and also our Electron application. So moving over to our uh, homepage, let's put in the functions we just created. Uh, let's make this a bit bigger. Um, actually not sure, are we on the right zoom level? Yes, we are. So, you know, if you have used um, Capacitor in the past, how to import it, you simply import the plugins from at Capacitor Core, and then you extract everything you need from this plugins object. So in our case, perhaps local notifications, the clipboard and models. Within the schedule notification, uh, we will just schedule a local notification, which actually isn't working super great inside the browser preview. Uh, this works better on a device or in our case in the Electron app. It will just trigger a useless notification five seconds in the future from now. So to copy the text, uh, let's say my dummy text, this is and this is as well connected to our input. So really just a simple example. This will copy our uh, text value, whatever it might be to the clipboard. And then you will see we can paste it from our Electron app everywhere else, just a standard functionality. And also a little model to display something. So with that in place, let's go ahead and run Ionic build and NPX cap copy in the background once again. But this is not all. Um, there's more to Electron, so let's check out our Electron folder. This folder contains a package JSON with a simple script, so you could also CD into the Electron folder and run npm run Electron start. That would basically do the same like uh, npx cap open Electron. What you see in here as well is the index.js. This is the file in the past we had to manually create at the top of our application uh, where we define everything for our Electron application. If you've used this in the past, you might recognize a few things. Um, so we create a window, we specify uh, the width and the height, we specify where to uh, load uh, our files. And if we are in the developer mode, we will also set our custom menu. I will actually um, remove it from is dev mode because we will also change the menu a bit and want to see the changes later in the final application as well. So then here's the line that opens our developer tools. Again, this of course makes sense in the is dev mode. And then uh, we see a bit more about the splash screen and some custom actions that recognize uh, or that are triggered on ready, window closed, activate. Uh, mostly that's for OS X, I think. So we got the splash assets. So if you want to change the splash screen we saw, just go ahead and change it in here. And I think we're ready to open Electron one more time right now with the functionality that we added. So here we go and we got the two buttons and the input. Um, to schedule a notification, uh, the only problem I have right now is that it appears at the top of my Mac and since I don't record the full iMac screen, I only see the notification, but you in your test should see the notification coming up at the top uh, of your screen on a Mac, on Windows, I'm actually not sure where the notification appears. But let's try this and add a bit of text, copy it to the clicks board, uh, to the clipboard, and then let's move here and see, I paste and exactly the text is here. So the communication or the general functionality works 100% with this application. Now, something you also don't see is the menu at the top. Right now you should see menu with one entry that said open dev tools. And you can change the behavior of the menu. Uh, I don't know how many people still use the menu. Uh, for some applications, of course, it makes sense. For other, like, let's say, uh, Slack or so, I basically never change or never use the menu. But you can change the menu template dev to whatever you want. And I added to the initial entry another entry that I called Simon Tools. And in the submenu, I added two items. 
The second item will simply quit our application using the app object of the uh, electron file. And the other one is an example for the communication inside electron applications. So there's a main renderer process and um, or a main process and a renderer process. And these two processes can basically communicate with each other by sending messages to them. In this menu, we're basically in uh, the uh, main context. So we can send a message to our or using the main window web content. And now we need a way to somehow catch this message inside our renderer. And this is called inter-process communication or IPC. Perhaps you've seen it in other tutorials as well. So once we click this item in the menu, we send out this trigger alert. And now we are making use within our Angular code uh, of the package we installed in the beginning um, and we injected private electron service, electron service, and there we go from ngx electron. So with this service, uh, we can now do a bunch of things. You already see there are a lot of functions. So first of all, it might make sense to check if you're an electron app, uh, you could, for example, lock it out. Uh, I am Electron and only perform the Electron relevant stuff in here or even tweak your UI based on whether you're running as an Electron application. And now the more interesting part is this Electron service IPC renderer and we want to say on. So. When the IPC renderer um, receives the following event, and now we use trigger alert, we want to call a simple function. So let's just create another function to show an electron alert. This is only used in this context. And that's it. So we're pressing the menu, the main process sends out something to the renderer, the renderer is registered on this event and then performs exactly this action. So that is the idea and that is how you connect Angular code with Electron code. And now, once again, running the build command in the background, um, we can see all of this in action. Also, um, the Electron folder contains our application, which is basically the Angular build of our application. So not really interesting, but if you go into the index, you will see it's really just our um, build. Uh, we can, hello, we can close this, the assets, everything's in here. The, uh, this folder has its own package JSON, so also own node modules. Perhaps there are things that you want to install or use inside the Electron application. Uh, the index.js is the place and the package.json is the place where you would install the packages that you want to uh, use in that case. So uh, while our app is building in the background, we can also take one more final step. And this is making our app ready for a real build. So, to do so, I will add two more scripts um, that I have to copy to the package JSON. Or actually, we can we can take a look what they up first because we're already done. So remember, uh, we changed our menu. We added an element that sends a message basically to our uh, Angular app or in general to the renderer process, but since we installed the package, we got access from Angular to this renderer process. And now clicking on the menu, trigger menu alert, it opens in here. You will see it on iOS and uh, Windows as well. When you use the menu and click it, the message will appear in here. Same for the notification, which appears at the top. So I'm really sorry that I can't uh, record the full IMAX screen. I'm currently working on thinking uh, of a new setup because this is really ridiculous. Now, we want to package this application into something you can give to your colleagues, uh, like a little game, an application, anything like this. And now the Electron Packager comes in. Um, I will add the scripts. Yes, the one line is pretty long. So you can find all of this, of course, in the article linked below the video. 
This is the Electron Mech and Win build, so you can run one of them. I will just run npm run and save the file uh, Electron Mech, and this will build our app. Let's go through the command. It uses the Electron Packager. We specify the folder, which is our Electron folder. We give the application a name, um, and then some more commands, platform for iOS, and the output folder, release builds, and for Windows, it's basically the same, but now the platform is a bit different and a bit more. I'm not completely sure about all of this, um, if it's necessary or not, since I also don't really, uh, I can package it for Windows, but I can't run it right now. So um, perhaps you can give this a try. Again, check out the article below. And then we should be able to see within the release builds folder of our application. Uh, there we go. Electron release builds, Simon app. Here's the application. We haven't specified an icon. That's of course possible as well. And when I run this application, we are no longer in development mode, but we're still inside our application and we have a full desktop application that runs our Ionic app. Everything of this still works, my dummy text, I can schedule an application, which you don't see, and I can also trigger the menu alert, which comes in right here. So that's how you build an Electron desktop application using Ionic. So another platform, iOS, Android, web, progressive web app, Electron. Now we got everything in place. If you want to see a more specific Electron application that has a real use case, please let me know in the comments. Um, right now, this is of course just a simple example, but I hope this helps you to get started, try it out, wrap your Ionic application in with Capacitor and Electron to a native application and I will love your comments on this topic. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your app faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon. <laughs>